Good morning. I welcome you to worship this morning. As I play with my microphone here, I apologize. I welcome you to worship this morning. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we find ourselves alone in worship uh, in this space, but I, I know that virtually you're with me. We, we had to make the difficult decision this week when we went to uh, Purple as a county to stop in-person worship here at Messiah. And we won't have in-person worship, and many of our other ministries will be uh, go virtual in the next uh, weeks. Stay tuned for that through our Facebook group page and our contact, uh, uh, our contact with you through email. Um, uh, and and this will likely occur for the next four weeks uh, through the season of Advent. Uh, in that case, then, we are going to go to just one worship service starting next week, just at 10 a.m., uh, to avoid contact for the volunteers that are up there uh, helping this happen, uh, and because without our praise band here, uh, to avoid contacts, um, it, it makes the most sense to just have one service at 10 a.m. So we will have one service next week at 10 a.m., not at 9 and 11 We'll return to the 9-11 schedule when we go back to in-person worship. And we hope that is sooner rather than later. I think we all agree. Um, Lord, help us. Uh, this is a festival day. This is why I'm all in white and everything's in white up there. This is Christ the King Sunday. One of the last uh, historically chosen festival days of the calendar year. Uh, a gee whiz fact for you to take home. It was started, I believe, in 1925 by the Roman Catholic Church and picked up by Anglicans and, and Lutherans quickly after that. And it was started in the 20s specifically to counter a rise of authoritarian, authoritarianism in the world and totalitarianism, uh, uh, heavy dictators that were controlling some of these nation states. The church wanted to make a strong statement that our true king is not the strongest uh, man in the world or, or the one who could gather the greatest army our true king is the one who shows mercy and love and that's christ the king we celebrate today uh we start with a litany that i prepared for us uh to give honor to jesus our king christ or king hear us christ graciously hear us God, our Father in heaven, God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, breath of life, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Christ, for whom we have done little and should do so much more, have mercy on us. Christ, bloodied King, leading us to victory in the fight with evil. Have mercy on us. Christ, whose merciful and unrelenting love softens the hardest of hearts. Have mercy on us. Christ, risen glorious in our flesh and journeying with us in our daily world. Have mercy on us. Christ, our King, reign in our hearts today and forever. Have mercy on us. God, our Father, you have called us to be companions to engage in this crucial struggle of our time for faith and justice, for peace and love. Bring to us the fulfillment of your hope, the work of your Spirit that's guided us through the centuries. Place us with your Son under the banner of the cross to serve him and him alone in his church as our true sovereign Lord and King. We dare to ask all this through Christ our King. Amen. Let us sing. Over all the earth you reign on high, every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim, that you'd reign in me again lord reign in me reign in our power over all my dreams in my darkest hour because you are the lord of all May my 
my life reflect the beauty of my Lord? Because you mean more to me than any earthly thing. So won't you reign in me again? Lord, reign in me, reign in our power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. Because you are the Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. You thought of us before the world began to breathe, and you knew our names before we came to be. You saw the very day we'd fall away from you, and how desperately we need to be redeemed. Lord Jesus, come lead us. We're desperate. Desire come that you would reign, that you would reign in us. We're offering up our lives, a living sacrifice, that you would reign, that you would reign in us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh again. Come search our hearts and purify our lives. We need your perfect love. We need your discipline. We're lost unless you guide us with your light. Lord Jesus, come lead us. We're desperate our lives, a living sacrifice, that you would reign, that you would reign in us, O oh, great and mighty one, with one desire come, that you would reign, that you would reign in us, we're offering up our lives, a living sacrifice, you would reign, that you would reign in us. So let us uh, end this opening with prayer. O oh God of power and might, your Son has shown us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. 
So give us now the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world that you have made with mercy and love as King Jesus has shown us. We pray all this through our Lord and Savior Jesus who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated if you're up at home. As we hear our scripture this morning, A reading for Christ the King Sunday, King Sunday from, the from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy, I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed the fl with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scatter them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the first chapter of the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the work of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Please rise at home to give honor to this gospel on this Christ the King festival day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. So when the Son of Man comes in his glory, Jesus taught, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered there before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a, separ as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and he will put the goats at the left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then the righteous, those sheep, they will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and all of his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. You're naked, you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. And then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't take care of you? And then the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So as I was reading this familiar scripture for me, one of my favorite scriptures actually, uh, I was struck this year in this hyper-partisan time that it's, uh, uh, that left goes to hell and right seems to go to heaven. And, and I know there's a few Republicans out there that are saying, this is exactly what I thought all along. But I, I, I got to tell you, Jesus did not have 21st century American politics in mind when he did this. Uh, it's Mideast tradition in Jesus' time and in our time uh, that the right hand is always the righteous hand. And uh, you wave with your right hand, you shake with your right hand, you eat with your right hand, not your left hand, regardless of whether you're lefty or not. And that's because the left hand is seen as unclean because it's thought that you do things in the outhouse with that left hand that you wouldn't want to share with your neighbor in any sort of way. And similarly, it's a tradition that sheep are kind of righteous animals and goats are goats, for lack of a better word. Uh, sheep in, in Mideastern times uh, where Jesus lived uh, were often used for sacrifices. And when they were brought forward for these religious sacrifices, people were um, honored, amazed, uh, took note that the sheep didn't bellow or, or, or get excited right before they were killed in these sacrifices. And, and so it was thought that men and women should be honorable uh, like sheep. It's interesting that in the Western culture, we take this very same idea about sheep and we tend to see it as a negative. We say uh, taking a lamb to slaughter when we want to tell somebody that they're being weak or compliant and not putting up enough fights. Isn't it interesting how cultures honor different things? And meanwhile, goats were seen as shameful creatures, not just because they ate everything and, and, and make a lot of noise. They were shameful creatures because the male goats were sexually active in ways that offended the senses of Middle Eastern men. Especially because uh, when goats would take a mate, uh, they would let other male goats have their way with their female mate too, which was Completely shameful for any man in Palestine in Jesus' day. So 
This is all to say that when Jesus wants to tell us a story of what the judgment day will look like, that there's only going to be two choices on that day. And one is really good, and one is really bad. And he lines up all the, the known good and bad sort of metaphors and images so that it sticks in the peasant community's mind that he's telling the story to. That on that judgment day, you don't want to be like a goat, for goodness sakes. You definitely don't want to go to the left, for goodness sakes. For this bonfire of eternity that you'd have to live in. You want to go to the right. You want to be honorable like sheep. You want to go into the kingdom and embrace by King Jesus. And all of us that are reading this today and, and, and thinking about it in the midst of the sermon today, we are paying attention because we don't want to get that wrong on our day. We definitely don't want to be goats on the last day. We want to be sheep on the last day. We want to go to the right on the last day, not go to the left. We want to not be slaughtered in some fire, but embraced in the kingdom of heaven. You, we might have been able uh, to get by skating on tests throughout school, but this is a test we don't want to fail. There are no cliff notes like there were for the Grapes of Wrath to pass that 11th grade test. We've got to be ready on that day. And, and then we find out the test is already happened in the midst of our lives. And what I'm amazed by, or interested in at least, is that both the goat and the sheeps in this story are both amazed at the results of the test. Right? They, they ask the identical question. <laughs> Lord, when did we see you naked or hungry or thirsty or sick or imprisoned or knocking on our door? They're both amazed at the results of the test. You can almost imagine the sheep are saying to each other, shh, just let it go, okay? Why, why are we asking this? Whereas the goats, they have some self-righteous indignation in the midst of that. Like any student that has ever felt like their professor has given them a bad grade undeservedly, right? They're, they're at that office hours door of that professor a half hour with all their documentation on why she made a mistake. They're both asking the same question, but they're asking it in completely different ways. The goats, they want to make a case for themselves that, that King Jesus has it wrong, <laughs> right? Their case is, Jesus, if you had just let us know that was you when you knocked on our door, we would have let you in. If you just let us know that you were hungry at that day, we, we would have fed you. They're coming to King Jesus with their own documentation, I'm guessing. You know, all the times that they served at the food pantry and fed hungry people. Jesus, if you would have just came on September 5th, 1999, I was at the LSS food uh, pantry there in Champion Road, Columbus, Ohio. You would have been there. I would have fed you. Everything would be fine. You just didn't come on the right day, Jesus. And their argument with Jesus reveals their heart, right? Their argument with Jesus reveals their heart. That they weren't serving because of a sense of mercy, of concern for their neighbor. They were serving out a sense of obligation, wanting to get it right. A quid pro quo, we might say. If I do this, Jesus will do this for me. Whereas the sheep, the sheep are asking this question, Jesus, we never saw you hungry or thirsty or, or, or sick or imprisoned or knocking on our door. The sheep are asking out of holy ignorance. That's what Dirk Lang says in the wonderful article in Working Preacher this week. Holy ignorance. <laughs> Jesus, we, we helped all sorts of, of, of hungry people and we never saw you. We, we helped all sorts of naked people. We just gave them clothes. They needed clothes, we gave them clothes. Uh, Jesus, we helped all sorts of sick people. We had the ability to, to serve them and help them in their illness and, and we served them. We, we, didn't, we didn't see you. You get it? They helped people because there was a need that their neighbor had. 
And they had an ability to fill that need. So they did. They helped people out of a sense of mercy because it hurt them when their neighbor was in pain. And they wanted to alleviate that pain for both of them. They helped them out of a sense of mercy that comes when we share the king's heart in the waters of baptism. One right here. Because Jesus has a heart of mercy. I could point to all sorts of stories in those four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the, in the New Testament. But on this Christ the King Sunday, we should just point to when King Jesus is on his throne. On, on the day he's on the cross, because the cross is indeed his throne. And when he's on that cross, King Jesus is asked by someone, another bandit next to him, another thief on the cross next to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And that thief says, I deserve to hang here on this cross. You don't. And Jesus has mercy on him. And Jesus doesn't have mercy on him because he confessed and repented, because we don't have anything like that in the scripture. Jesus doesn't have mercy on him because he prayed a believer's prayer or, or announced that Jesus was his Lord or Savior or, or was baptized in the waters of baptism. Jesus doesn't have mercy on him for any of these reasons that we think things we have to do in order for Jesus to have mercy on us. Jesus had mercy on him because he was in need and he asked. And Jesus could comply. Jesus had mercy on him because that's Jesus' heart. King Jesus' heart is full of mercy. And now in the waters of baptism, we share King Jesus' heart as we have died in these waters and we've been risen with Jesus. And you ask yourself at home, well, what do you mean by mercy? <laughs> well, what does that expectation look like? daily in my life. And I can tell you, we show mercy for people not because they deserve it or because they earn it, but because that's what our heart desires. And we find joy when we're able to be merciful. We find joy. Yeah, I thought of three ways to describe mercy. Listen to these and see if they help. The first way is that Mercy is when we can see ourselves in our neighbor. Right? Remember that old saying there, but the grace of God go I? Mercy is when we can see ourselves in our neighbor. So that when they present, to them, present themselves to us in pain or in need, we can act in the way that Jesus commanded us to act. To love our neighbor as ourselves. And, and there's great joy. And being able to fill the need of someone who needs us. There's great joy in, in helping someone who we can see that's like us. Mercy is the ability to forgive. And not forgive in some way a, a greater evil that, that doesn't really affect you. But to forgive someone who has done something towards you. <laughs> hateful and hurtful. Out of their brokenness. And not only forgive them, but to engage in healing their wounds, even in the midst of them battling this battle that you never asked for. That's being merciful. To choose to forgive rather than hate. And finally, mercy is the special care that you have for the least and the lost and the most vulnerable. Because you know in our world, they've received mercy the least. And that hurts your heart to know this injustice, these prejudices, uh, this, uh, this classism has kept people down. And you're going to show mercy for them because they've had so little of it in their life. Mercy isn't earned or deserved by our neighbor. Mercy is our joy to give because it bursts from our heart. That is King Jesus' heart. When I was reading the notes that I had for this 
uh, lesson from years ago now, uh, I, I wrote down a story that, that must have caught my attention. And I didn't use it in preaching that year. And it was about Kelly Justaner. And Kelly Justaner uh, participated, plotted uh, the murder of her husband over 20 years ago. And she was arrested and convicted and, and sentenced, uh, found guilty and sentenced to uh, execution in the state of Georgia. Uh, for her participation in the murder of her husband and the father of her children. And <clears throat> while she was on death row in those years that it takes uh, uh, to exhaust all your legal possibilities before the state thinks it's a, it, it's a good idea to take the life of someone in their care. Kelly had a conversion of sorts. She, uh, she came to Jesus, we would say, on death row. And, and she uh, got a certificate of theology for Emory University. And the thing that struck out to me in my notes was that she became a pastoral care presence on that death row in that Georgia prison that she served for years. Uh, a pastoral care presence to her inmates uh, who had to suffer every day knowing that their life was going to end soon at the hands of the state and a pastoral care presence for those guards that had to be drawn into relationship with these people that they were going to be responsible for taking their lives soon. And so that as her day came near for execution, those guards in the death row rose up and, and pleaded with the governor for her to be given mercy along with the inmates, along with the warden of, of her prison, along with Pope Francis and other outsiders that were touched by her story, along even with her children, whose presence of their father she had robbed them of and honestly wanted little to do with her until that point. They all demanded mercy for Kelly. And Kelly was executed by the state of Georgia on September 30th, 2015. No mercy was given to her. And I wrote in my notes those years ago, and I said, the bandit, the thief on the cross, there were far less reasons to give him mercy than this woman in death row in Georgia. Yet Jesus found it in his heart to give him mercy. And we couldn't find it in our heart to bring Kelly mercy. And I'm thinking to myself that Kelly is surely on the test. <laughs> Kelly is on that test. Were we a goat or we were a sheep in that opportunity to be merciful? I know our congregation is full of nothing but sheep. People whose hearts have been exchanged in the waters of baptism. Who have this merciful heart that is bursting forth. I know that to be true because I have seen you at work. Encountering Jesus at a Hope Lutheran Church. As you bring clothes for those who are naked. I have seen you at work feeding those at Heart Food Pantry as you bring food for those who are hungry. I have seen you encountering King Jesus as you have cared for those who are sick at Wesley Ridge. I have heard of you encountering King Jesus as you have traveled to Marion Prison to minister to those who are imprisoned through the Kairos ministry. And I've seen you welcome the stranger when we've been here in person in worship on a Sunday morning who's knocked on our door and King Jesus is in our midst. And you did all these things not because you had to or because you needed to to get to heaven or because you thought this was going to go well for you with Jesus as if you did. You did all those things because long ago, you exchanged your heart with King Jesus. And now his heart is our heart. And that heart is full of mercy. And we are going to live in the reign of Jesus. Merciful and loving. Amen.
us to praise. Father all glorious, or all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come thou incarnate word, merciful mighty Lord, our prayer attend. Come and thy people bless, and give thy word success, and let thy righteousness on us descend. Come, holy Comforter, thy sacred witness bear in this glad hour. Thou who almighty art, rule now in every heart, Never from us depart, Spirit of power. To thee, great one in thee, eternal praises be. Hence evermore, thy sovereign majesty, may we in glory see, and to eternity and adore. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Why don't we share God's love and God's peace online, virtually with our friends that we're worshiping with. Uh, and while we're doing that, we will prepare for our offering. Tyler's got a Christ the King festival offering for us today. Uh, we hope that you're able to give a good gift uh, online uh, with the link that Becky will share with you, or you could mail that in to us. And we also know that some of you are in need uh, of help from us, and we have that help to give. So please contact us if, if this is a financially troubling time for you. Uh, Tyler?
I thought on this Christ the King Sunday that we would wrap our prayers around the words of the thief on the cross that I mentioned in my sermon today. Uh, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. King Jesus, we pray this morning, giving thanks that you have remembered us that you've exchanged your heart with our hearts and that we burst forth with mercy. We give thanks this morning, Lord, that you have loved us not because we deserved or have earned it, but because love is what you're about. We give thanks, Lord, that you have shown us mercy in our brokenness, our hard-heartedness, our selfishness, and our greed. We give thanks this morning for you. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Lord, we pray this morning that you soften our hearts to make us even more merciful. Help us see the hungry that are before us. Help us see the naked in front of us. Help us work to heal the sick, to care for those in prison, to give water to the thirsty. Help us, Lord, to love those who we want to hate, to reach out to those we want to be divided from. Help us, Lord, be merciful, King Jesus. Lord, in this church, in this community, our merciful heart is open to all those who are sick or ill, especially Kimberly Ryan and Meg Reidler, Susan Franklin, Julie Searles, Jennifer Solt, Joanne Hainer, Al Stryker, Ralph Portier, Cheryl Kelly, Ryan Thomas, Sandra Shell, Earl Vance, Mary Kaler, Ruth Robbins Hewitt, Susie Berry, Holly Burgess, Hastings and Relindus Agbor, Anton Orso, Amana Orso, Asia Miller, Dick Cherry, Elisa Limbers, Angela Marshall, Marshall Wood, Barbara Bass, Nick Sudamac, Yvette Walker, the James family, Carl Kurz, we pray for all those who are grieving, especially those who are grieving sons that they lost long ago, Harold, or Sam and Freddie Hessler, Bob and Peg Raby, and now the Klein family this week. And we pray for all those others who are in our hearts that we lift up silently or loud. Remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Thank you, King Jesus. Amen. Pray with me this prayer that King Jesus taught when he walked with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us the trespass of those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements uh, before we scatter today to be God's people. Uh, first, if you, would come, if you would be here this morning in person, you would have noticed all the food that we have at the front entrance. All that is for Heart Food Pantry. Uh, we are excited uh, for the good gathering uh, from our preschool and from our members, and we will get that over to Heart to uh, feed those in need here in our Reynoldsburg community. Thank you for that. You would also notice that there were congregational envelopes over there on the, in the Welcome Center, which we have really no good way to get to you at this point because we really are discouraging you from coming into the church uh, for the next few weeks just to uh, heed our health director's uh, warnings of, of trying to do as little outside the home as you can. So we'll have to figure out a way to get you those 2021 envelopes in the weeks ahead. Uh, we do want you to visit the website, though, because we are going to have a congregational meeting on December 13th. And if you go to our website, messiahlutheran.net, you will find uh, all sorts of information, a budget for 2021 proposed, people who are going to run for council, and also importantly, a Joseph Coat proposal that the council and Coast Coat's been working on for a while. You'll find that proposal there. You'll also find a presentation. Uh, we're going to do this meeting virtually. You would have received an envelope, I hope, in the mail with your ballots and how we're going to do this. Uh, if you don't receive that in the mail before Thanksgiving, please call us and we'll figure out what's wrong. Uh, and we'll get you another letter and some ballots. Because we want everyone to participate in this congregational meeting, December 13th. Uh, next Sunday will be the first Sunday of Advent. Remember, we're going to have those four Sundays of Advent. We're going to have one worship service at 10 a.m. on those four Sundays. And there'll be Christmas trees behind me, I promise you. I just don't have anybody to help me put them up yet. So I still need two volunteers, uh, two men or women that are able to get up on a ladder and help uh, put these 10-foot uh, trees together uh, for me. Uh, so please email me that if you can help me with that. That would be wonderful. And finally, I want to give thanks, uh, celebrate with two of our uh, couples in the church. Robert and Barb Teague are celebrating 25 years of marriage uh, this week. And, well, you know, what a good gift because they, they both received wonderful spouses and, and, and those spouses passed away. And in the midst of their sadness, they've received wonderful spouses again. Uh, what, what, a, what a great gift for Robert and Barb and, and we celebrate with them. And the other... One, uh, other one I want to honor is uh, Cheryl and Mac Kelly. Cheryl and Mac Kelly are going to celebrate 50 years this week. And this is especially difficult because Cheryl is going to have some cancer treatment that's going to put her in the hospital most of the week, starting on Tuesday. And, uh, and so she won't be able to celebrate with Pastor Mac uh, as she would like and as Mac would like. And and so that grieves, uh, that grieves me. I, I hope you reach out to them and, and encourage them in the midst of this week. And I know you'll keep Cheryl in your prayers as she has this cancer treatment this week. Uh, and, and give thanks for that. All that, let, let's have a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor. And grant you God's peace. Amen. Who is this King of glory that pursues me with his love and haunts me with each hearing? His softly spoken words, my conscience a reminder of forgiveness that I need. Who is this King of glory who offers it to me? Spirit.
its ever longing for his grace in which to stand who is this king of glory son of god and son of man his name is jesus precious jesus the lord almighty the king of my heart the king of glory who oh, is this king of glory with strength and majesty and wisdom beyond measure, the gracious King of kings, the Lord of earth and heaven, the creator of all things, who is this King of glory, he's everything to me. and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us next week, 10 o'clock.